the subject uh, of this talk, as given in the, the menu, I think is we're talking about, uh, what, 20 million exciting, innovative, and possibly dangerous things you can do with asterisk. Uh, as usual, um, the running order for this, this little presentation was not fixed. In fact, it's still not fixed now. We're, we're making it up as we go along. So uh, we're going to show you some bits and pieces um, that uh, we've been playing with. Um, we showed you, I, I've got to show you the corporate ad at the beginning. Uh, just 30 seconds of explanation about that. I'm the head of research and development at Truephone, the world's first global mobile operator. Uh, we, uh, we cater for um, mainly large corporates. Anybody who has uh, uh, an international footprint, uh, you travel extensively between multiple countries. We do that on conventional 2G, 3G, LTE. We also do mobile voice over IP. Most people know us as being mobile VoIP guys, but we now do GSM and 3G as well with our smart SIM cards. So enough of, uh, of the corporate advert. What we're going to talk about first is um, um, the changes that are all happening at the moment. I mean, there's a lot of, lot of change in the industry um, which is being driven largely by the sort of stuff that's going on here at, at Astricon. Uh, and the first thing we're going to talk about is um, embedded asterisk on devices like this one here. This, for those of you who have not met, met it before, is a Raspberry Pi. It costs about 25 pounds, got an ARM processor, uh, you put an SD card in it, and away it goes. It's a cracking bit of kit. Amazing what you can do with it. And one of the things that we do with it, and where's the, the hand microphone gone? Uh, Randy? Yeah. Because Ward is going need to that, need that in a second. One of the things we can do with it is we can put asterisk upon it. Um, we're very lucky today because we have with us uh, one of the greatest exponents of uh, putting uh, asterisk on, um, on devices like this in the form of Ward Monday. So, Ward, would you like to come up and, uh, and join me? Sure. Is your microphone on? Is it on? It yeah. is. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of uh, question and answer uh, session uh, talking about the uh, uh, what, incredible PBX? Yes. Uh, up on the uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, and then we're going to lead on to uh, something a little bit more grown up um, a little bit later. So, um, so Ward, tell me about what you can do with Incredible PBX on the Raspberry Pi. Well, let me give you the history. Somebody on uh, the PBX in a Flash forum, I guess about two years ago, uh, posted a note and mentioned that the Raspberry Pi was coming out and they had used some of these other embedded devices and would it be possible to run asterisk on them? And we all kind of sloughed it off and uh, said, you know, no way. <laughs> There's not enough RAM, it doesn't have enough horsepower. Uh, the first Raspberry Pi came out, it had 256 megs of RAM. <clears throat> and uh, Lo and behold, somebody got it working uh, over in Europe. And we kind of ran with that and uh, added our own little bells and whistles and uh, finally got 90% of what we call the incredible PBX uh, ported over to the Raspberry Pi. And, uh, you know, it, it took about 240 megs of RAM to get all the pieces loaded. Yeah, and, it's, it's uh, worth going through what all the pieces are because this is not a basic asterisk, is it? No, this is a full-blown uh, lamp stack using Debian uh, with SendMail and MySQL and FreePBX and all the bells and whistles uh, that you'd have on any standard uh, server you'd use. Yeah. The only difference is this one in the US is 35 bucks and uh, 35 bucks yeah okay it's worth going through how easy it is to to set this up yeah <laughs> we we actually started testing this with uh, some of my neighbor guinea pigs and uh, you know not being uh, the trusting soul for new technology i uh, 
set it up so that it rebooted every night at midnight. And uh, four of my neighbors have been running this uh, for over a year now and never had a hiccup. Okay. And it has Google Voice on it. Uh, you know, it has faxing on it. Uh, really, the whole feature set that you would get with Incredible PBX, we've got running on this uh, little SD card. Okay. And uh, It's worth just going through um, the, the installation procedure. How long does it take to install Raspberry, uh, an image on that, and get it up and running? From well, once, once you do the download of the uh, image from SourceForge, uh, it takes about... 40 minutes to burn it onto an SD card. And if you use, we use a, a four gig image, uh, which is compressed to about a gig and a half uh, that you have to download. Once you get that image, uh, if you use a larger SD card, which we recommend, like an eight gig or a 16, uh, you can then expand uh, the image to, to fit whatever size card you use. And the whole process probably takes under two hours and you don't have to sit there with it, you just have to be the monkey and push the button, so. Indeed. Then you just stuff, stuff the SD card in there, boot the thing, and you've got yourself a fully functional, functional uh, PBX. Right. Uh, and more importantly, um, or just as importantly, it, uh, it only consumes, what, three watts of power? Three watts of power and uh, if you spring for the little $12 uh, Wi-Fi USB card, uh, you don't need an internet connection other than just the, uh, the little Wi-Fi adapter, so. Yeah, pretty good. So just to, just to close that off, what sort of uses have people, do you know, have, have people put um, this to? Well, it's kind of interesting. We have uh, one of the major airlines on the West Coast uh, you know they've got they've got ticket counters all over the the world really, and they were about to deploy uh, asterisk uh, on a big server in their Denver headquarters, and they were going to put uh, a pretty substantial server in each of these airports. But they were worried, uh, you know, about all the things you worry about when you deploy. Uh, decentralized servers and something goes wrong and you got an airplane that's coming in in 30 minutes. So they've completely shifted gears and they're going to run each of the uh, ticket counters around the world off a Raspberry Pi that's linked back to the server that's uh, cool. with Eeks in Denver. So, yeah. And stuff. if something goes wrong, they've got a backup SD card. You put the second SD card in unplug it, plug it back in, and you're back in business in under a minute, so. Okay, well let's do your ad now. If people are interested in, in uh, playing with Raspberry Pi with Incredible PBX, where do they go? Uh, the easiest way is just to go to incrediblepbx.com and it'll walk you through the process there. Yeah, and buying the hardware, you mentioned where, where to get the hardware. Yeah, online. all of the hardware links and uh, the pieces you need and what type SD card. You know, the Raspberry Pi is a little picky about SD cards. Um, all of them don't work, and typically the, uh, the high-performance ones are the ones we have problems with. So don't get fancy. You know, get a cheap SD card from the drugstore uh, that's not high-performance because it really doesn't it won't matter. That's, that's great. And we're a no-profit corporation, by the way, so all of this is free. You so uh, we've got a couple of minutes. Has anybody got any questions about the, uh, the Raspberry Pi? You want to? Let me. So who's first? Gentleman in the purple. Now this is going to be interesting because. Uh Hi, Ward. Good morning. Um, I was actually wondering what uh, what sort of call volume you've gotten through the that uh, the Raspberry Pi. It was, I mean, I've I played with it actually myself a little bit, but a very at home one two calls at most. But to hear yeah, about the ticket counters and all that, that's amazing. And uh, I was just wondering what sort of volume you see this thing handling. You know, um, simultaneous calls. We really haven't stressed it. Um, I have done a ten person conference call on. Uh, one of our units at our office, and there were no problems. Uh, 
you know, as long as you're not uh, transcoding data, you know, that takes a lot of uh, computer horsepower, uh, you know, I think five or ten calls at a time, you're probably fine. I just want to say the first time I spoke to Ward was on his Raspberry Pi and he was just hanging out in his conference room. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Looks like you get off, uh, got, get off easily. That was easy. That was easy. Yeah. So, so thank you for that, Ward. Sure. That's the ras Raspberry Pi incredible PBX. Ward Mundy. Okay, next for your excitement and viewing uh, um, pleasure, we've got Michael Walton who's flown, jetted all the way from um, South Africa, from the far south. Um, and Michael's going to show us, well, not a Raspberry Pi, but something that's a little bit more grown up. So, uh, and we're going to do a bit of a live demo as well. Here, you're going to need that. All right, you can clip me up. I'll try and clip you up. This is all live as it happens. Uh, I need a bucket for that, don't I? Yeah, I'll just wave it around. So, uh, yeah, what Michael's, uh, whilst he's getting himself sorted out, what Michael's team have done, uh, they, they build um, small and very cost-effective appliances. Um, and we're just going to run through some of the things that you can do on, on this, and we're going <laughs> to... I think that might be for you, James. Oh, is that for me? Hello. Let's see if we can... Speak again. So what is this? This is... Uh, this is a, a VoIP call running through the appliance, uh, running from an analog phone to what sort of client's that? Looks like CSIP Simple to me. CSIP Simple on an Android handset. And uh, it's over Wi Fi. There's our Wi Fi access point. So that's cool, isn't it? Well, well, it's, well it's, it's functional. Now, what is, well, let's talk about the box now, Michael. Um, what is it? Okay. Am I on? No, you have to talk into it. All right. Hold that there. Can Tell you, us about your box. Can you all hear me now? Yes. Please excuse the South African accent. I'll try to keep it uh, rounded and intelligible. So a couple of years ago, we realized that there aren't that many asterisk appliances around. I think there are quite a lot now. But uh, we decided it would be a great thing to build. Um, people wanted one. So, uh, and if three watts wasn't enough for you with your Raspberry Pi, we thought maybe 10 watts. Let's see what we can do with 10 watts. So uh, we designed from ground up an um, Intel Atom-based board to run Ubuntu Linux and Asterisk and a bunch of other stuff besides. So just like the Raspberry Pi, uh, I forgot what the name of that PBX was, Incredible, Incredible PBX. PBX. We took free PBX. Um, we then also realized that uh, our customers didn't really understand free PBX, so we did a Java and GWT-based GUI on top of that to make it really easy to configure. Um, we, we also realized that customers wanted to keep PSTN connectivity. Um, they weren't quite ready for, for VoIP only, but on the other hand, they wanted to get to hold of all the least cost routing services that were available for them. Um, so we designed a bunch of um, POTS and, and ISDN interface cards uh, and put it all together into a box. And this is, our, this is the baby. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than a Raspberry Pi. But, uh, but not hugely. I mean, just to give people an idea of the cost of something like this, as it stands, what's the rough cost of that, that installation? Just say what boards you've got in there. Right, so this, this guy over here has a 1.3 gig Atom, can do about 12 to 16 codecs, G729 or whatever. Um, so it could probably handle 50 or more concurrent calls if you wanted to without transcoding. It runs off an SD card, 16 gig SD card. Um, and this one has basic rate ISDN, which is not interesting to Americans, but it's very interesting to Europeans and South Africans. And it has two analog uh, FXS ports and two analog FXO. We go up to 24 port in a full rack size box and you can kind of mix and match your ports. But cost-wise, uh, on this one, retailing is, is around, would be around six, uh, no, 600 would be without some of the ports, maybe 800 $900. Right. 
There are other embedded boxes uh, uh, around in the, on the market, but uh, would you like, in two sentences, just say what makes yours special? Yeah, I think, I think what makes ours special is that we've, we've been doing asterisk for a long time. Um, we've, we've gained a lot of, lot of knowledge over the years, and we've learned how to productize asterisk. So our production boxes run <gasps> 1.8, which is a little bit old. I think we're going to move to 11 soon. But uh, in fact, this box here is running 12, um, and it hasn't been a problem to, to, to get it to 12. Um, I think, I think we, we ship a stable, a very stable platform. We're able to roll them out quickly and efficiently, and we provide things like um, Debian-based packaging for updates. So running updates from the cloud is really easy on these boxes. Do a number of things like that that just make them easy to adopt for non-technical people. But having said that, for others, we have an open platform. Um, my, one of my customers is sitting in the front row here, and they've taken our box and they've added a, a bunch of stuff to make it work with, um, with the N-Switch, the Integ Integrix uh, hosted VoIP, hosted PBX product. Okay. And whilst you were, were saying that, that was slightly more than two sentences. Sorry. Like you said. Um, we've got another little demo here. Um, You'd like to talk us through this, Mike. In fact, you better drive it. It's your demo. Yeah, and I hope it works too. So this is a little bit bleeding edge for us. Um, we've, we're using SIPML5, which is um, it's a SIP stack running in JavaScript-based SIP stack running in a browser. So this page was served up from our box, and uh, it uses a new feature on Asterisk 12. I think it may be in 11 as well, but anyway, it's, it's a new feature um, which really works in the web RTC world. Um, I think it's just called uh, web sockets on asterisk, and it allows you to send SIP call control um, instead of through the normal SIP channels through an HTTP type channel. Yeah, that's pretty ble bleeding edge. I think th this is probably the first time uh, anybody has ever seen a live web sockets demo at asterisk on because it's because it's new, isn't it? It, it, it is pretty new and. Um, so let's get back to it there. Uh, what is interesting about this is that the, all the media is handled directly through the browser. So Google Chrome, Firefox, they both integrate the WebRTC framework, which provides audio and video streaming st straight in and out of your browser without any add-ons, without okay. any flash player or anything. Well, come on, let's, so, let's see it so works. Let's, let's see if it works. So uh, we are going to try and call that phone again. So this is running uh, uh, through a web page uh, in Chrome on, on my ancient knackered old uh, MacBook, uh, which is then running across an Ethernet cable into the, uh, into the far south appliance. So you will see that it wants to know, may it use the microphone of the, of the PC? We will let it use the microphone. And you'll have to speak softly, James. Hello. Hello. So I think that's a pretty, that's that's a pretty valid demo of uh, WebRTC. And, and what's really good about this is uh, that's the first demonstration of WebSockets, and we managed to get him before uh, Peter Dunkley, who's on later. So if you're really into web, WebSockets, Peter Dunkley is the man. I mean, he's written all the WebSockets so um, bits and pieces for Camera Elio. Um, and uh, if you're into that sort of thing, you have to go and see that demonstration. You will also see uh, three, four, five Raspberry Pis flying in close formation in that one. So if you're a Raspberry Pi fan, Peter Dunkley is the guy to go and see. So how we're doing for time, we've got about another 10 minutes. So um, I can sit down now. No, you can't. I'm sure. Uh, has anybody got any questions about this, this particular appliance or, or other appliances? So where's the, where's the hand mic? Randy is running. JR needs the microphone. In fact, JR does, doesn't need the microphone because JR is JR. So he probably doesn't need it and need the microphone at all. JR. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, so the appliance, I'm looking for a SIP, just a SIP only appliance, no cards, no interface cards, just um, something I can, just an embedded device that I can, uh, you know, put asterisk on, run it from the command line, yep. no web front end, just, just pretty bare bones basic. 
and I just don't feel like getting into I don't have the time to get into it myself and do it. I could, but uh, it's just something I'd rather source from somebody else. Right. Uh, if I was looking for a quantity, say like 20 boxes, just basic with no ports, what kind of price points are we looking at there? I'm, I'm the technical guy, not the commercial guy. So, uh, but, but I think we're looking at more like a $600 price point or so. Okay. I, I, I hate to commit to that right now, but, but yes, absolutely, we do, we do it as a bare bones um, appliance. Me, uh, what's the contact? How do we get in touch with you guys? Right, so well, I'll, I'll probably hook you up um, after yeah. this. There was a, sorry, sorry to so cut you off, JR, with afterwards. your really good commercial question. Uh, but was there another question somewhere else? Yeah, front row. A really good Looking question the coming now. Not, not fed at all. Well, I'm just messing around, actually. But how is it possible for you to make such an amazing box at such an incredible price, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't believe you asked that question. We, uh, we, have, we have very demanding customers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. So what... Yeah. So yeah that, that's right. Yeah. This is not new, new technology. What I find really exciting about this stuff is uh, the way that it differs from uh, a normal PBX that you go out from buy, buy from a conventional PBX vendor. If you go and buy one of those boxes, it does what it does, and it doesn't do anything else, and you can't change anything. The wonderful thing about this is if you want to change the functionality, you can. Right. You can do anything. If you want to change the, um, the mix of boards, you can. It's fully, um, fully flexible, modular, right. uh, and of course the other thing is uh, power consumption. It takes what, ten watts? Yeah, as I said at the beginning, it's a little bit more than a Raspberry Pi, but not actually all that much. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, a lot yeah. more horsepower than a Raspberry Pi. And just going back to you, your question, Jr. I mean, if you only want a, a number of little boxes just to muck around with, you can do it on Raspberry Pis or even. Uh, the US equivalent, the Beagle Bone Black. Uh, right, T.I. Satara, right? Yeah, which I'm becoming a bit of a fan of. I, I'm, I'm a great Raspberry Pi fan, but the Beagle Bone Black is, uh, is pretty good. If you don't want the, the super duper HDMI video, video output, which we were going to demonstrate today, but we couldn't get the projector to work, so we crashed and burned on that one, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that, so that's another alternative. Uh, in UK, the Beagle Bone Bone Black. Uh, costs five pounds more than the, uh, than the Raspberry Pi. So it's about the same sort of size. So any more questions? Or are we going to get off lightly? We were going to do one more demonstration, but Tim's run away. I think Tim is saving his really good demos for his <laughs> slot later on. Um, we have a, a number of other demos which uh, were so bleeding edge, we decided not to do them because even uh, for me, they're too risky. Uh, one last little plug, uh, and that is we are uh, running a competition here at uh, Astricon uh, to stimulate live, uh, exciting demos, innovative demos, possibly dangerous demos. And so um, uh, during the rest of Astricon, the judging team, which will be myself and Ed Guy, who's at the back waving, will be lurking around, observing the progress of uh, all the live demos, uh, working, trying to work out uh, which is the best and possibly most dangerous one. Uh, Tim Panton is very good for live demos, I have to say. They normally fail. So um, and at, the, uh, at the end of Astricom, some lucky person will get the extra special Truphone uh, dangerous demo prize. So watch out for that one. Well, the, there will be demos going on within the scheduled sessions. Uh, there will also be demos going on in the exhibition uh, area. If you have a demo that you want to give and you think it may be entertaining, innovative, and possibly a little bit risky, uh, come and see us and we'll arrange a, a time and a place for you to demonstrate it to people. So the, the whole intent of this, uh, this exercise is to get people doing more exciting, on-the-edge, risky stuff. Talking about risky stuff, uh, David Duffett is wearing his risky trousers and he's just emerged at the back of the room. So, I think we're done. We're done. 
I would like to give the award for the best presentation Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. about WebRTC to Sir James Bodie. Welcome. Thank you. Guys, uh, I didn't really read the thing I got about moderating, but I think you're supposed to fill this out. They would really appreciate it. It's your survey that's right in front of you. They're, I'm sorry? I don't know this gentleman. He's a heckler. Could you? Security, please. It's very important because you grade Sir James, of course. There's absolutely no way that you would give him a bad grave. So okay, who's, coming who's, up who's in... Who's on next? Who's we, on next? Who's on first, you mean? No, who's on next after this? No, I know. It's, I believe it would be Tim, and he is He's not present. Away. But we have a break because... Do we have a break? He starts at... David, when is it? I don't have my schedule. Oh, loads of time. We could have loads done, of time. We could have done some more dangerous demos. Well, try, try one on. Try one on. People are here yeah, to see well, WebRTC. Yeah, if I can explain, some of the things we were going to do, we were going to do some interactive stuff with the rest of the Truephone R&D department who are back in UK. So uh, for those of you who may have met Dan Lane, dangerous Dan to his friends, oh. we were going to be remote controlling various devices around uh, Dan's house. And we were going to sh share it with you with a live video link and then invite you guys to phone in uh, with your cell phones or your, give your SIP URI to, to phone in so that you could make things move and jump about and lights change color and all that sort of stuff in Dan's house, which could be reasonably amusing, but because... <laughs> and uh, it could be dangerous, yeah, particularly with Dan, um, um, but we decided not to do that. We, then we've got Andy Smith. So those of you who come on the VUC will know Andy Smith. He's normally the one who's on the bottom left-hand corner of the, the shelf. Next to bottom. Bob, who's also here. Next to Bob. Bob's here. Yeah, there's yep. Bob. And Bob um, is not your uncle. Uh, no, Bob is not my uncle. Definitely not. Um, and we were going to do uh, a demonstration of uh, voice changing. So if you are a kidnapper or, or somebody who's extorting something, you probably want to change your voice. So we had a really good demonstration of uh, how to use asterisk to uh, mask your identity, uh, but still being uh, identifiable. Um, uh, we try not to these days. I'm, uh, Just when he's on Second Life. So, so we were going to do that. We had a couple of other things. We were going to show you Inside Dante, joke. which is our, our wideband uh, conferencing bridge. But uh, there's no time for that today. Is there a way, is there anything that those of us with uh, phones that can dial SIP, is there anything that we can do that will come on the sound system? Or? Uh, yeah. You got anything running there? Uh, yeah, let me. I, I can I will bring up very quickly go my into old SIP client. I'm ready to. Uh, I can very probably go into Dante, actually. Uh, how are we doing for time? Do you, do you want to see Dante? Floor, you're not bothered? We no, still have on. a little bit more enthused. Do you want to see Dante? Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay. I can't hear you girls. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's show you Dante then. Dante, isn't it Dante, by the Dante, way? Dante, as, as in Dante. Inferno, Dante dot... Dante. Truth. You're all going to be hacking into this now. That's a problem, isn't it? Um... So what we're seeing here is a conference bridge. Um, these are, at the top, we've got all the rooms that I can get into, I own, and then we've got a whole load of other rooms underneath which um, uh, other people own, uh, but I have access to. So one of the things I can do is, um, in fact, gentlemen, who's got a cell phone and wants to dial that number? Right here. If you dial that number there, yeah, which, one, two, three, four, Public one. So, dial that what was it? Six four six three two eight three nine four six. And if you dial one two three four, uh, you will get into uh, that that room. And I want to see who the first person to get into the room is. Are you in the room? Oh, there we are. And so, oh, is that a South African number? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, indeed. So, so South African number uh, coming in using G711. Can we have somebody else in there, please? Uh, whilst you're doing that, I'll... Oh, yeah, it's a true phone, true phone music. Um, oh, there we got another, another one. Who's that? And another one. Now the fun starts. And just to make life a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add uh, a high def. Is anybody in... 
Yeah, one, two, three, four is the number. So I'm going to add a, a media stream into that to make it a bit more interesting. And uh, yeah. So you should be hearing now um, a high definition um, uh, feed. I think it's absolute 80s. Uh, and you'll note, well, it's, it's, it's HD. Now, if I phoned in from a true phone uh, extension, it would, be, because we, uh, we, we authenticate either on the SIM card, if you're coming in on, on the 2G, 3G, or on the uh, SIP credentials, um, it means that you, um, you don't have to identify at all. So you end up with a, a pinless um, um, conference call. Uh, somebody called in and has dropped off, so one, no. would somebody like to drop off somewhere? And I'll just demonstrate what happens. One of the things about uh, uh, mobiles, there we go, somebody's dropped off, there we go, I'll just call you back, is that um, you drop out all the time uh, on, on cellular. So, yeah, somebody's about to ring. So, so when you drop out, um, you can be brought back in. So what we do is we, we, me, we keep the, the session open for about 30 seconds a minute afterwards. So if you drop out, you just redial, you go straight back in where you, you, where you dropped out of, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, that was, oh, that's filled five minutes, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, I'm not getting any crap. You, you're not? Okay. Anyway. I'm in. Well, it's because you're in, I called you back. So any questions about Dante? Yeah, go ahead. My this interface is based on Ajax or what's for I mean communication, sorry. Uh, you mean the web interface? I'm just asking about this UI. Is it based on uh, neither. Ajax or WebSocket? Uh, neither. Secret? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what, we, what we're using for that. But those, those people who know will probably look at that and say, I know what that is. Um, but, uh, but I don't want to admit to it in here, really. Let me just lose those ones. So any other questions about that? Bit of fun. Um. Hey, James, I'm told that there's um, drugs and uh, women outside during the pause. Right, okay, well... But I mostly, probably some coffee and some kind of really starchy, yeah. heavy carbohydrate snack. And we need to get out of the way so that Tim can get his... It's not really Tim, yeah, and it's not Tim that's next is Yakub. I'm sorry I made that mistake. Okay. But he'll be here with some uh, homemade vodka and all of the rest of the bells and whistles. So it's probably pause time. Let's hear it for James, though. James, my old okay. friend.